Hello, ladies and gentlemen, you're welcome to yet another edition of our program, Right on Point today. This is another Friday, and it's another 7 p.m. On this edition of the program today, we are receiving as our guest on this edition, Mr. Chabi Rudney. He is an engineer and is the co-founder of the Aqua Hope Foundation. He's here today to talk to us about the work that they have been doing to impact Cameroon, which is just the prime reason for this show. Ladies and gentlemen, join me to welcome our guest, Mr. Chabi Rudy. Mr. Rudy Chabi, you're welcome to this program today. Thank you, Ferdinand, for hosting me on this illustrious program. I am Rodney Chabi no, me. I am uh, an engineer from the National Advanced School of Engineering Polytechnic Yaoundé. I am also the co-founder and president of Aquafop Foundation, like you mentioned, and I am glad to be here. It's always a pleasure to have people who are impacting the society, people who are impacting our country more particularly. And that's why I said this platform is a platform, you know, to give exposure to young talents that are innovative and creative in every angle that they have chosen to express their liberties and love for the country in. So once more, you're welcome. Those watching us right now on YouTube, on Facebook, and all over the country, and all over the world will be asking the question. Apart from the fact that you are an engineer, and you're the co-founder to this great organization, Ark of Hope Foundation. Who is Rodney Chabi? Um, who is Rodney Chabi? Rodney Chabi is a passionate Cameroonian who is desirous to, to create an impact in the community, in the local community, in the national community, in the African community, and in the world at large. Who, that is who Rodney Chabi is. I am a purpose-driven young man, I am a go-getter, I am a vision bearer, and I, um, I have a sword in my hand which I want to use to do the work that God has called me to do. That is what I, who I am. Now, this basically means that uh, Rune Chabi wants to fulfill his purpose. You, yes. You're looking forward to fulfilling your purpose yes, uh, in life, and, and, and it's God-driven. So now, looking at the Ark of Hope Foundation, uh, which is an organization that you lead in Cameroon. They have been doing a lot for this country. Can you tell us what Ark of Hope Foundation is all about? Thank you once again. Ark of Hope Foundation is a non-governmental co um, community-based mm -hmm. organization that is, uh, has as objective to rehabilitate the street children in the streets of Yaoundé, mm -hmm. Cameroon, Africa, and in the world at large. It's an international organization that has a branch in Cameroon, mm -hmm. in Kenya, in Nigeria, and in other parts of the world where we are seeking to expand. Yeah. So the purpose of our organization is to reach, send a helping hand principally to the street children mm -hmm. and to other underprivileged people of our community and of our society. That is the mission of Ark of Hope Foundation, founded by very young, vibrant Cameroonians who want to push this idea to the limelight and help the needy street children in Cameroon. Now, when you talk about Ark of Hope Foundation and you talk about street children, are, are, are your activities still tell only about street children? What about the disabled? Mm -hmm. What about the underprivileged? What about the orphans in society? Mm -hmm. Does your foundation look into that? Yes, certainly. Um, as stated in our, in our mission statement, yeah. our, our foundation first has a vision of zero child on the street. Yeah. But it's not only limited to that. It, there, it's, a, it's a global vision that seeks to take into account all socioeconomically disadvantaged people in our community. Mm -hmm. So our target is to, is to empower the socioeconomically disadvantaged and give them the capacity to not only fend for themselves, and, but to also be able to assist others around them, mm -hmm. and in the long run, to be able to, to make a, a contribute positively to the growth of the society and their communities at large. So far, what has the foundation been able to do? What has your organization, the Ark of Hope Foundation, been able to do mm -hmm. as far as uh, uh, making sure that those children who are living some kind of misery in the streets live some kind of miracle in their in homes, like every other child. 
the community? Um, first and foremost, um, I'll recall us to Maslow's pyramid of needs yeah. in order to, <laughs> to bring us, to bring an individual to their optimum potential. The first you have to give them food, clothing and shelter. Yeah. And that is what, that's what we'll be able to do with the mm. three children found principally at the Mokolo Erobi neighborhood of, of Yaoundé. Mm -hmm. That's at the level of Cameroon. We'll be able to, to host them working hand in hand with um, a local imam, Imam Ibrahim Danjuma of the Ekudu Mos at Brikiteri. Mm -hmm. So with him, we'll be able to have a place where we can keep these children, feed them, clothe them, and educate them, and teach those who are, some of them who are capable of basic skills um, that can help them to make a living for themselves. Mm -hmm. And furthermore, we have had several outreaches to, to orphanages and, and other less privileged people, IGPs, where we will be able to assist some to pay their school fees and helping them to meet their basic necessities of food and clothing as much as is in our, in our power. Mm -hmm. Now, for the branch in, in Kenya, principally in Bungoma County, mm -hmm. they have worked on several projects and uh, they, have re they have created an impact with Within their community, okay. where they will be able to get recognition by the local police sure. and other stakeholders that have helped them to reach, have deep roots in their community and send many children to, to school. So, this therefore means that Ark of Hope Foundation is not only based in Cameroon, it has branches all over Africa and they are working in the same line. Yes, they are working in the same line. Yes. So, so, how do you coordinate the activities? of uh, Cameroon, Kenya, and all other branches working in synergy. Okay. Um, uh, there's a, a saying, unless two agree, they cannot move forward. Yeah. So I believe the most important thing is we have the same vision, we have the same purpose, mm -hmm. and the same drive to reach our objective. And that is what gives us a unity mm -hmm. to be able to work on, on our objective. Now, the Cameroon branch is the mother branch, that's the home branch. Therefore, we have as burden to coordinate the activities of other branches. And in so doing, we work hand in hand through various social media platforms. We coordinate with them, we talk with them, we orientate them on how to go about certain things. And it's all, we share ideas because it's not only one person, we're all of us in a community that has the same mission and the same goal. So we exchange ideas through WhatsApp, Facebook, and all every other social media outlets that is at, 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 disposal, at our disposal. All right. So now, working together is always good. It, it's mm -hmm. always about teamwork. Yes. Now, you don't work alone. You work with a team of very young, committed, determined guys who believe in the idea of you know cleaning the streets, uh, not from dirt, but from pe uh, young people, young Cameroonians who have a right to better living. Mm -hmm. So now, I want to find out from you, what has the foundation been able to do till date? What, has, what has been the projects that have been able to realize till today? Um, today, the projects we have been able to realize are, are various outreaches that have helped them to have a smile on their faces, will be able to profile a number of district children mm -hmm. and and right now, some of them are going to school. Mm -hmm. Some of them will, have, will be able to enroll in school and, and pay some, some of their fees. Mm -hmm. And also, we are, we, are, we are looking bigger than yeah. that. Because you see, to educate a child is to save a home. To save a home is to save a community. To save a community is to save a nation. Okay. So that is what we have been able to do so far mm -hmm. uh, amongst our other projects that are coming up which we'll talk about. All right. Mm -hmm. so, so now... Uh, street children, when you get them out of the street, are you able to get them a place comfortable? Like, you know, uh, I've been able to, 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 to before we were talking, we, we got to the program today, mm -hmm. I've been able to find out about uh, non governmental organizations that mm -hmm. are trying to, you know, clean the streets and bring these children to a comfortable place. Mm -hmm. Do you people have a place where you take the student to, or you have liaised with other organizations? Uh, in the community that are ready to absorb these children, orphanages and stuff. Mm -hmm. How do you help them out of the street? Um, 
that it's the, the, I'm asking this because you yeah. made mention of the fact that you need to give a shelter and stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you engage with them in the street when they don't yet have shelter? Mm -hmm. Do they have, and how do they do? How do you do that? It's a it's a it's a very challenging aspect of our work mm -hmm. because it doesn't only involve what we want to do. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> there are a lot of both public and private stakeholders yeah. that are involved in in the matter and. Mm -hmm. Some of the moves that we take are, are sub, like I would say, a bit um, confidential. Mm -hmm. However, okay. we pass through all the legal processes that are required okay. to take them out of the streets and and give them a shelter. Mm -hmm. And some of them actually already have some sort of shelter, like in the most. Yeah. The most has generally has living quarters where they host some of these children. Mm -hmm. So we work on them based on that on that aspect, and others. It's a gradual process. Taking a child out of the street is a gradual process that has a lot of steps and procedures for it to be successfully done. Okay. Yes. So now, uh, since the beginning of this uh, show, mm -hmm. you have been making so much, uh, you have had so much attachment in your language mm -hmm. to the mosque, to the mosque, to the mosque. But I believe that all of the children who are on our street mm -hmm. uh, are not Muslim. Mm -hmm. and don't have a Muslim background. Mm -hmm. Now, what about those that are Christian? Has there been any move to equally engage them in your forces? Mm -hmm. Yes, there has been, there have been many moves. Mm -hmm. Thanks for asking. And it, with those children, we work with them, mm -hmm. mostly with orphanages <coughs> that are ready to host them. Yeah. But there's no, no most orphanages and and reception homes don't make a distinction of religion yeah, or, yeah. or background or mm -hmm. race or anything. Mm -hmm. So we work with them in that context yeah. with orphanages and, and structures that have been put in place to, to host these children. Yeah. But my question was coming because you said, when I asked how do you absorb these children and make them leave the street, mm -hmm. you made mention of the fact that uh, most of them have accommodation in the mosque that we have around in Cameroon. Yes, that's, yes. that's an, that was just an example, that was just an example. Of, of one case that we're working with. All right. Yes, so, yes, ladies yes, and gentlemen, uh, if you're just joining us on this edition of the program, this is Right on Point, and we are receiving today Engineer Rodney uh, Chabi. He is uh, the co founder of uh, uh, Alcohol Hope Foundation, a foundation that helps, that's helping you know, to give more life, give life, happiness, and joy, peace in the hearts of street children. We'll be right back after this break. right on point and you know always if you're right on point you are right on point on today's edition of the program if you're just joining us we're receiving engineer Rodney Chabi he is an engineer and he is the co-founder of Alcohol Foundation so many might be asking what the relationship between an engineer who is more scientifically inclined and doing a humanitarian humanitarian work from the videos uh, you just watched from the slideshow you just watched we saw some of the activities, the outreach carried out by this organization in Cameroon, trying to impact lives, trying to change the status quo of the lives lived by young people in Cameroonian streets. Ladies and gentlemen, we're welcoming back our guest. Right now, we're going to be asking uh, our guest, uh, Engineer Rudy Chabi. You know, it's not easy to be an engineer, so we should always, <laughs> we should always come to that. So I want to find out from you, what are some of the projects that you have carried out, and what are the projects that you are looking forward to in the near, nearest future? 
the projects we have carried out are, are geared towards the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals okay. of access, access to education for all. Mm -hmm. And among those projects, the, the first phase was sending a number of kids to school. Mm -hmm. But now we have a, a bigger project, which is often a literacy center, mm -hmm. where so many of these children can go and learn how to read, write, and do basic mathematics, mm -hmm. and also be engi engineers, doctors, yeah. mm -hmm. journalists like you are, and yeah. people who impact the society, and problem solvers, and who knows, have their own foundations in future yeah. to help other people. Now. Alcohol Foundation is building a uh, positive influence mm -hmm. in, in Cameroon society. Now, with all these projects you have at hand, I know with, uh, as far as uh, Cameroon is concerned, if I'm not making a mistake, it's very difficult, you know, to handle such uh, organizations. Mm -hmm. With the bureaucracy and lots and lots of difficulties, financing, sponsoring, sponsorship and stuff, it's always difficult. How have you been coping? The projects you have, you have been able to do Understanding the fact that you're all young workers are coming into the working sector and trying to chip out something from what you're earning to be able to do this. How, how, how have you been able to do this? Um, the main source of our resources, first and foremost, is con personal contributions from our, our members mm -hmm. and, and all well-wishers and sponsors out there who have, in one way or the other, been moved by our vision and have decided to support these three children mm -hmm. within their own means and also we also liaise with both private and public stakeholders who have a part in the in the lives of the street children so working with them has enabled us to to pull the resources together that we need to achieve our goals it's a bit it's a challenging task but it's not impossible yeah, that's, uh, when you say you have been able to, 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 to have the resources that you need, uh, are you telling those watching us, I know they're watching us right now from the United States, they're watching us from Europe and other parts of Africa, are you telling them that uh, the resources that you have are sufficient to, to, to clamp down on the numerous projects that you have at hand? Um, I'm not saying they are sufficient. <laughs> yeah. I'm saying they have aided us so far. Mm -hmm. But I will say this, as long as there's a child on the street, there's still work to do. Okay. It means there's always going to be a need for more resources. Okay. So as long as there's a, ch there's a child in your, in your community who, has, who doesn't have food to eat, mm -hmm. or who doesn't have a place to stay, or a mother who doesn't have a place to sleep, it means you still have so a part to play in their lives. Mm -hmm. So that is why I call on all our viewers and all well-wishers and and donors and philanthropists who are moved by a vision mm -hmm. to, to send it and, and extend a helping hand to support these children through our foundation until there are zero children on the streets. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the resources are there, which we have been working on, but we call on more resources to enable us to have a greater impact. In society. Now, I, I, I believe that you know, uh, Act of Hope Foundation has been doing a lot of work for the street children. Now, you, you, your organization is based in Yaoundé, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, yes, our head office is in Yaoundé. Your head of office is in Yaoundé. Mm -hmm. Have you been able to touch street children? Say, in, in my group in uh, Meganga, have you been able to touch uh, street children? Say, in Kuseri, uh, say, in uh, Banjun, uh, and in other parts of Cameroon, or you have been able to do what you have done so far only in Yaoundé? Um, Yaoundé has been the main focus of our activity okay. because that from statistics, the, um, statistics from various organizations, mm -hmm. Yaoundé has one has a high population of street children mm -hmm. among in Africa. Yes. So those are that's why our focus has been here. Okay. But despite that fact, we have um, partners in other parts of Cameroon mm -hmm. who through us. And with, by collaborating with them, mm -hmm. we'll be able to affect and impact the lives of other street children in other parts of Cameroon. Now, definitely, if you're watching us right now, this is uh, uh, co one of the co-founders, the president of the Ark of Hope Foundation, uh, Engineer Rudy Chabi. He's a young engineer, but he has made it clear to us 
but it's through the little that they get from what they earn from the little work that they're able to do all this work. If you can support them, make sure you do that because they're here to impact lives, they're here to impact this country positively. And bet you me, these are the young people who have the future of this country and the future of Africa right in their path. And if you are there with us, you're right on point. And if you're right on point, like I say always, you are right on point. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take this break, and this break is going to be bringing to us a little teaser of a powerful soundtrack that's going to be released this Saturday in Yaoundé, that's tomorrow, uh, by uh, General Pele Pele. General Pele Pele, he is the Arafat, that's Cameroon High. And of course, we're going to be going down at Nikita Hotel, Karapu Biamati, from 7 p.m. Don't miss the rendezvous. Get the teaser, have your impression, and we will be right back. So welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. You're watching Right On Point. If you're just joining us, we are live on Facebook. We are live on YouTube. On this edition of the program today, we are receiving a guest, Rudy Chabi, who has been talking to us so at length about what Akopo Foundation has been able to do to impact the life of street children in Cameroon, which is something that has been neglected in many countries across the globe. They are doing it in Cameroon today, and they are very young people doing this. So we are impacting, they are impacting the society in a very, very special way. Welcome back from uh, that teaser from General Pele Pele. We are celebrating Cameroonian music. We are celebrating every young talent in Cameroon. And General Pele Pele is coming up with this powerful song. This is the Arafat of our times, the Arafat of our country. We're going to join him this Saturday. That's tomorrow from 7 p.m. at Nikita Hotel to have the full dose of what he's bringing. Getting back to our guest, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this evening, I would like to find out from you. Uh, if you have been able, if you were asked the question right now, what would you want Cameroonians to do for Act of Hope Foundation? What would be your answer? What I want Cameroonians to do for Act of Hope Foundation is to spread the word to the entire world and to support us in cash, in kind or in indirectly by any other means for us to achieve our vision of zero child on the street. Zero child on the street, that is the mission. We should not find any child around the Commercial Avenue of Yaoundé, neither should we find a child around the Commercial Avenue of Bamenda, nor in the farther regions of Cameroon, nor in the south or in the little round. They want a street free of street children. That is the main mission of uh, the Ark of Hope Foundation. Uh, 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 can you tell us some of the members that you have been working with, some of your executive members that have been working with closely mm -hmm. to ensure that uh, this dream mm -hmm. remains and that the vision continues? Um, first and foremost, I would like to give a shout out to my co-founder, uh, Mr. Gum Kaleb, oh. who is also the CEO of Beroka Engineering Company. Okay and as a company that have supported us a lot mm -hmm. in our vision of Zero Child on the Streets. Mm -hmm. And I've worked with members of his staff and they're really wonderful people. The work they are doing, uh, I believe working in the domain of sustainable energy, sustainable construction mm -hmm. as is really a, an aspect of construction that is impactful to, to the community as they do low cost housing solutions, which have enabled us to have communities where we can host our street children. Mm -hmm. And once more, I also want to give a shout out to my co-founders in Kenya of Akofo Foundation Kenya for the great work that they have been doing, particularly their president, Mr. Kevin. And also I want to give a shout out to my staff here in, in Yaoundé, our vice president, 
our project coordinators, our financial secretary, our executive generals, and every other member of our staff who has been putting the hand on deck to see that our vision comes to fruition. I also want to thank all private donors who, for some reason, may not be mentioned for the support that they have been given us. And to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you for without you, we couldn't have reached the point where we are now. I also want to thank <clears throat> every other person who has been praying for us, the mothers of these children, the children themselves who have been praying for us, for us to succeed in our mission, and every other person, and especially uh, my host, which is you, <laughs> Ferdinand. I want thank to thank you, you for, thank you for giving me a platform through which I can voice my message to the world at large. Thanks again for hosting me here. It's my pleasure. It's my pleasure to have you. You know, we, we have to work together. That's why we say here, together we win. Mm -hmm. I think that's the battle we need to fight together. It's We are starting, but we know that we are going to go to higher heights mm -hmm. with what we are doing because we, we have the intention of impacting society just like you are doing mm -hmm. in our different uh, uh, capacity. I would like to, in a special way, say a special thank you when you were saying thank you. I heard you mention Mr. Ngem Caleb, mm -hmm. the CEO of Beruka Engineering, uh, one of the mighty great sponsors of today's edition of the program. I want to say shout out to him and to his entire team. Uh, they are doing a marvelous job in constructing this country. I know you are an engineer yourself. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about engineering, we're talking about building the nation in every way. Uh, an engineer is not only somebody who has done sciences. Certainly. This certainly. is engineering too. This is engineering. <laughs> an engineer is a problem solver. A problem solver. <laughs> yes. We try so to... if you're solving a problem, you're an engineer. You're an engineer. Thank you. Today, <laughs> from today, I'd like to tell my program director that I'm an engineer. You should mention that each time. He's calling me. So thank you very much. Thank you, Beruka Engineering, for the sponsorship. We're so glad. Keep doing the great work we're doing. If you want any work as far as constructing Cameroon is concerned, when we talk about construction, we're talking about construction. We're talking about building Cameroon. Lexically, we're talking about building Cameroon. In terms of roads, we're talking about building Cameroon. In terms of houses, we're talking about building Cameroon. In terms of ICT and every other thing that has to do with engineering, Beruka is there for you. Thank you very much for supporting us. I want to thank equally the Comunamites in the United States, the Comunamites in Cameroon, for the great support they have been giving us since the start. Of this uh, show right on point we are getting there gradually surely because when we are right on point we are right on point but before we leave you i'm going to come back to our guest i have some teaser questions i want to ask him right now and uh, <laughs> i don't know how it's going to affect them uh, but I, I want to find out from you there are some three questions i want to ask you now you have two questions two seconds to answer the question and then two or three seconds at most to tell us why are we ready to go? Yes, we are ready to they go. They want to hear you. Are you ready to go? <laughs> I am ready to go. I'll right. say I'm ready to go. <laughs> All right. Now I, I'm hesitant. I don't know what you ask, <laughs> but I'm ready to go. All right. Now my, my 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 first question is, what's your best meal? My best meal is kat kat, my tra no, my traditional meal. Uh, Abinambas. Yes, corn fufu and. Jama and Jama, as we call it in Pidgin, but in the in my local in my mother tongue, it is Abai Numbas. You told your exam because you went above two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> now the next question I'm going to ask you: What's your best color? My best color is green. Why? Because green signifies hope. It signifies newness. It signifies life. Unfortunately, we don't have green on the platform. <laughs> yeah, so that, but that's interesting. We think that there's life in what we are doing. And then last but not least, what kind of girl do you like? The fat, the short, the tall, the slim? I like the African girl. <laughs> the African girl. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Rooney Chabi. It was a pleasure having you on this edition of the program today. Yes, thank you. So what's your last what's your last word to the young people who are, are, are looking up to you and who are looking up to society to impact Cameroon positively? My last word to all the youth like myself is that there's a sword in your hand and you're the one to accomplish your mission dare to be different dare to be extraordinary dare to solve a problem in your community and the fruits will speak for itself thank you very much ha.
that that came from an engineer. <laughs> and I'm like, are you sure this man is an engineer? Because like it was coming from Shakespeare, uh, the literature well sufficient the message, so glorious and so uh, long. Ladies and gentlemen, it was a pleasure to have you on this edition of our program Right on Point. Each time you are right on point, you discover that you are just right on point. It's every Friday at 7 p.m. Facebook, YouTube. On YouTube, it's Right on Point TV show. On Facebook, it's MC Seju Wanga Event Services. You can always follow us to get updates on what we are bringing for you. On today's program, it was Rudy Chabi, our engineer and the co-founder of Alpha Hope Foundation. They have been doing a lot for this country. Keep supporting them, keep moving behind them, keep pushing them. Let us win the state and make sure that all the state children have a home and have something doing in life. I want to send a special greetings to all those who have watched the edition of the program today and to say thank you to the director of the program, uh, Mr. Sue Blaise, to say thank you to Mwam George, uh, our collaborator, and equally to our ICT technician and the big brain supporter of this uh, program, Nkwainze Romeo. It was a pleasure having you today. I've been your humble host, and Kidney Bomb says, and Nkwainze is my name. Shout out next time. We're still on this platform. It's Friday, 7 p.m. Thank you. We are right on point.